Can psychoanalysis be useful with infants? How can we think through concepts of metapsychology with infants? The two Freudian topics are in reference to the instances which are fruit of the completed intrapsychic differentiation process. How can they be useful with infants, who by nature are still undifferentiated and unfinished? In this episode, Bernard Gols presents us with his arguments for a third topical approach. Drawing on his extensive experience of parent-infant therapy, he proposes a meta-psychology of the primitive pre-object bound, a perinatal topic of mental representation of the intersubjective bound prior to differentiation of instances and object discovery. Bernard Gols is a child psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, member of the Association Psychanalytique de France, and professor emeritus of child and adolescent psychiatry at the Université Paris-Cité. For many years, he was head of the child psychiatry department at the Necker Enfant Malade Hospital in Paris. Among other associative activities, he is presently chair of the European Association of Child and Adolescent Psychopathology, and he recently founded the Institut Contemporain de l'Enfance to promote psychological care and support for infants, children and adolescents with reference to psychoanalysis, psychopathology and pedagogy, with links to the world of arts and culture because of the dialectic that exists between therapeutic creativity and artistic creativity. The three areas in which he has been most involved are early infant development, autism spectrum disorders and adoption issues. He therefore particularly focused on the question of links. You can download the podcast transcript from the link provided in the written description of the episode. I am Julia Flora Libert with Talks on Psychoanalysis, the podcast devoted to current topics on psychoanalysis worldwide, featuring the voices of the original authors. This podcast series published by the International Psychoanalytical Association, is part of the activities of the IPA Communication Committee and is produced by the IPA Podcast Editorial Team. Head of the Podcast Editorial Team is Gaetano Pellegrini. To redaction and post-production, Massimiliano Guerrieri. To stay informed about the latest podcast releases, please sign up today. My name is Bernard Gols, and it's a pleasure for me to be able to express myself on the question of the mental representation of links and about the interest of a possible topic of links. Before that, I would like to thank Gaetano Pellegrini, Julia Flor Alibert, and the International Psychoanalytic Association for their confidence in giving me the opportunity to do this podcast in the context of the talks on psychoanalysis. I am a child psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, member of the French Psychoanalytic Association, and I am Emeritus Professor of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry at the University Paris-Cité. For many years, I was at the head of the Child Psychiatry Department at the Necker Enfant Malade Hospital in Paris, and now, among other associative activities, I chair the European Association of Child and Adolescent Psychopathology, and I recently founded the Contemporary Childhood Institute to promote psychic cure and care for babies, children, and adolescents based on psychoanalysis, 
psychopathology and pedagogy with openings into the world of arts and culture because of the dialectic that exists between therapeutic creativity and artistic creativity. The three areas in which I have been the most involved are early infant development, autism spectrum disorders and adoption issues. I am therefore particularly focused on the question of links. I must finally apologize because I don't speak a very good English, so I have to speak a little bit slowly. The two topics proposed by Freud, namely the first one, unconscious, preconscious, conscious, and the second one, id, ego, and superego, formalized from 1920 onwards, both refer to a conception of the psyche organized into psychic places or instances which are the result of a completed process of intrapsychic differentiation. These two topics are obviously still relevant, and we know the heuristic dimension they are from a clinical, technical and theoretical point of view when working with differentiated subjects as children, adolescents and adults. On the other hand, when we work in the field of perinatality with babies or with subjects who are still poorly differentiated, such as patients with so-called archaic pathologies and especially autistic ones, these two topics belonging to a metapsychology that is essentially intrapsychic, their use is inevitably subject to caution. Indeed, if the baby does not impose any renouncement of our usual psychoanalytical mark points, the theory of the drive, the theory of anaclesis, and even the theory of the deferred action, its fundamental incompleteness of the babies, its fundamental immaturity, both psychic and physical, require us to think the topical point of view about it, which remains by essence strictly intrapsychic. This is why we are proposing today what we might call a third topic, which would be a topic of the mental representation of the link with the double idea, paradoxical in appearance only, that on one hand primitive bonds could be invested even before the subject and the object are clearly delimited, and that, on the other hand, this pre-object representation is a sine qua non condition of the emergence of the object. In any case, this is a proposal what we make, knowing that this hypothesis of a third topic has already been evoked by different authors, but in other fields than early development. The topical at the risk of the dyad and the triad. An infant alone does not exist. Everyone is familiar with this famous phrase by Winnicott, which implies that the baby cannot be understood outside of the links he forms with its primary environment. The psychology, psychopathology and psychiatry of the baby have been in full expansion for several decades and our knowledge of dyadic and triadic functioning has greatly developed. Whoever says dyad or triad refers ipso facto to the interpersonal register and not to the intrapsychic one. We know that the historical conditions of the birth of the two great theoretical corpus, psychoanalysis and attachment theory, explain that the former is basically centered on the intrapsychic register, whereas the latter one is centered on the interpersonal. These two theoretical corpus were born, in fact, in extremely different historical contexts. The end of the 19th century for psychoanalysis, with the enigma of the inside of the object, with the failure in 1895, the discovery of X-rays by Röntgen for the inside of the body, and the writing of studies on hysteria by Freud and Breuer for the inside of the psyche. And the end of the 20th century, 
for attachment theory with the problem of interpersonal security and insecurity. Psychoanalysis is therefore naturally marked by the question of the intrapsychic, while attachment theory is centered on the question of the interpersonal and the problematic of security. The debates between the supporters of psychoanalysis and the supporters of attachment theory were lively. Daniel Vidlocher proposed the idea that these conflicts may have been the result of a missed rendezvous, a missed appointment between English psychoanalysis and Hungarian psychoanalysis. As a matter of fact, Michael Balin's concept of primary love could have made it possible to overcome the splitting between the primary nature of attachment and the secondary nature of love according to psychoanalysis. Whatever these historical reminders may be, it is clear to see the impasse of an intersubjective topic, dyadic or triadic, including a baby whose internal world is not yet sufficiently differentiated to hallow that the metapsychology concerning him would really be intrapsychic. Now I would like to say some words about the question of representing the link before representing the object. This proposal is much less paradoxical than it seems, especially if we consider the genesis of the links in perinatality. When we speak, as it is classic and frequent to do, of object representation, this concept often appears to be too global, too macroscopic, and it is undoubtedly useful to decompose, to deconstruct, to diffract it into several distinct levels, at least three. The representation of the place of the object is one thing, the representation of the links to the object is another one, and the representation of the object itself is yet another one. I begin by the place of the object. The place of the object probably has its own level of representation and there are several arguments to support this idea. Those of us who work in nurseries know well, for example, that children placed from birth for adoption seem to have the idea of what a parent is very quickly, if not immediately. Certainly, after some time, they may have the opportunity to observe visits from other children's parents, but the question is deeper. The neotenous baby may have a kind of innate representation of the other, who is necessary for him, the helpful other, the neighbor mensch of the psychoanalysis, without whom he cannot live and which he fundamentally needs in the framework of the fundamental anthropological situation proposed by Jean Laplanche. This is probably what Bayern wanted to evoke with his concept of preconception. When Bayern talks about the breast, he sometimes said, the baby seeks the breast where it is accustomed to be. This strange but stimulating phrase perhaps does not mean that he seeks it on the mother's body according to the memory traces he has of each feeding or according to an instinctive attraction by the smell of the milk, but rather that he seeks it at this very location of which he would have a sort of proto-representation. Otherwise, we know that for Bayern, the proto-representations can only become an effective representation when it meets in external reality the object that corresponds to it and which stabilizes it through the emotional experience of this meeting. This is also what Sylvain Missonnier takes into account when he speaks of the register of the virtual in relation to the first chapter of life that pregnancy represents. 
He even speaks of a virtual object relationship, which is generally understood to mean the representations that parents may have of the unborn child and which correspond in part to what has been described as the imaginary child. But perhaps we should also consider that the fetus, for its part, may also have the possibility of investing a proto-representation of its future parents, proto-representation of functions, of course, rather than this or that more or less figurative static characteristics. In the field of art, among many other possible illustrations of the importance of the place of the object, we could mention The Desert of the Tartars, written by Dino Bizzati, a book in which the hero spends the whole of his life scanning the horizon until death, the horizon where he thinks an improbable enemy army might emerge. The theft of the Mona Lisa from the Louvre Museum in 1911, following which, between 1911 and 1930, Dorian Lehrer tells us that there have never been so many visitors to see the empty place of this painting, of this famous painting, more visitors than to go and admire this masterpiece itself, which nevertheless attracts crowds. And finally, the temporal place of the object in the world of Jorge Luis Borges. The representation of links to the object then constitutes le another level of object representation. Even before this debate, Serge de Bovici, as early as 1960, had this somewhat enigmatic sentence, the object can be invested before it is perceived. The object can be invested before it is perceived. We could also say about the game of Fort Da, the string, the string as a link, is invested before the real itself. The first reading of Serge de Bovici's sentence can be made according to the axis of narcissistic objectal balance, in the sense that the object can be invested while it is still perceived as a part of oneself, as a narcissistic object, before it is truly perceived as an external to oneself, as an objectal object. Another reading of this sentence can also be made in relation to the theory of attachment with, here again, the idea that one can become attached to an object that is still experienced as indistinct, indistinct from oneself, which could give to the first attachments the subjective value of self-attachments. In any case, this investment in the object before it is perceived as, as such appears in some way as the opposite of the desobjectalizing drive studied by André Green as the death drive. For this author, the desobjectalization of the object would be the consequence of a devitalizing investment, whereas for Serge de Bovici, it is the vitalizing investment of the pre-object that would prepare the objectalization of the latter in the perspective of a life drive. The concept of uh, interaction, emblematic of the general theory of systems, is today, as we know, at the heart of the old studies and research concerning the baby and the beginnings of its development. And the concept of interaction obviously refers to the question of the link. We often talk about the observation of babies by adults, according to a Sturzbeck setting, for instance. But we forget to say that the baby is himself a great observer of the adults who take, who take care of him, his caregivers. The baby observes us carefully. He is a great clinician of our affects and of our emotions. This observation of the mother by the baby and its work of evaluating its differences from the usual begins in the first six months of life through the attachment system. 
The baby sends signals, inscribes it in his psyche a sort of average of maternal responses in terms of attachment, and at the time of each new interactive meeting with her, he will then measure the difference between the present maternal response and these average representations that he has formed of her, average representations that are none other than his future internal working models described by Inge Blatherton. In the second half of life, this observation of the mother by the baby is done through the analysis of the mother's interactive style. For instance, the quality of affective attunement, described by Daniel Stern, which is more or less uni or transmodal, more or less immediate or deferred, more or less attenu attenuated or amplified, and whose intrapsychic internalization will take place at the level of generalized interaction representations. If the mother is not as usual because she is anxious or depressed, for instance, the baby is then introduced to tersity since it is better to incriminate a third party than himself at the origin of these maternal modifications. This question will infiltrate, as we know, all our love stories throughout our lives insofar as it is a question of the difference of the beloved object from what it is usually, will always arouse in us the fear of a rival third party in the way that, as a baby, we were introduced to tersity by this question of a variability of the image and functioning of our mother. As we can see, the attachment system, like the affective attunement system, allows the baby to represent and psychically inscribe the variations in maternal responses, which undoubtedly corresponds to a certain form of representation of the links with the object, but which says nothing about the formal characteristics of the object. Is the mother blonde or brown, tall or short, fat? or him, and so on. This is an investment in the variation of maternal response and not an investment in the mother as an object. As a result, we can indeed speak of an investment in the pre-object link, and this is what I wish to underline here. To conclude with this level of representations of the links with the object, let us add that Geneviève Hag has often said that in a certain way the baby paints an abstract portrait of his mother, a rhythmic portrait based on the representation of his dynamic interactions with her, before being able to paint a truly figurative portrait. In her opinion, this agrees with the hypothesis of André Leroy Gourand, who said that abstract art would in fact be much older in the evolution of humanity than figurative art, as shown by certain paintings discovered in caves long before those of Lascaux with the scenes of hunting, fishing and war. So the idea would be that modernity is in some way a return to abstract art. It is fi finally this, uh, the representation of the object itself. It is finally this level of object representation to which we intuitively think when we speak of object representation. It's the level that corresponds in particular to the concept of mental image in the classical sense of the term, image of the other, image of representation of, of faces, places, objects. The idea proposed here is that this level of object representation would fi finally be later than the two previous levels of which it would be, it would be a sort of resultant or outcome. And now, a little plea for a third topical. From there, if a metapsychology of the dyad or the triad or an intersubjective topic appear to be unsustainable, can we move toward the perinatal topic of the mental representation of the link, 
we are among those who, th who think that it is possible to deal with the perinatal clinic and very young children while having the legitimate claim to remain psychoanalysts in these particular conditions, knowing that it is the metapsychological dimension and the topical dimension that are probably the most challenged by the fetus and by the baby. How can we think in metapsychological terms about the diet and the trade with the central difficulty which the passage from the interpersonal to the intrapsychic register is undoubtedly? Are we right to suppose that the father-mother-baby system is in itself the carrier of the dynamic ability of transposing triadification in the interpersonal register into triangulation in the intrapsychic register? Nothing is less certain in reality, and it's the whole question of interiorization that it is raised. That is raised. So a metapsychology of the link is necessary here, which opens up a third topic that would allow us to overcome the splitting between interpersonal and intrapsychic registers. What, however, is meant by the metapsychology of the link? The establishment of the psychic apparatus, which is always, whether we agree or not, the representation of the link, in the link and by the link, is played out at the interface of the intersubjective and the intrapsychic, and John psychotherapies particularly promotes the double movement of interiorization and specularization that underlies the passage from the interpersonal register to the intrapsychic register. We can think that the presence of a third part is here necessary. So the joint parents fetus be the joint parent fetus baby therapy device that we practice at the Neke of Amalad Hospital would be precisely able to provide the diet and the triad with a framework acting as an observing and participating third party able to induce this movement of mentalization of the perinatal behavioral interactions. In any case, it seems to us that the framework of joint therapies offer a fertile paradigm for testing and clinically legitimizing the concept of the third topic. Joint parent babies therapies I have developed along three distant lines psychoanalytically inspired joint therapies, interactive video feedback guidances, and more recently, attachment therapies. The question is not so much to know which technique is more effective than another one, but rather to specify the differential indications in the sense of what for whom. Following the major research carried out in Geneva in the 90, 90 years by Bertrand Kramer, Francisco Palacio Espaza and Daniel Stearns, it appears that brief psychoanalytically inspired joint parent-baby therapies, which are often conducted by two co-therapists at the rate of one session per week of every fortnight, are particularly indicated when there is a positive pre-transference when the parents' projections onto the child are non-psychotic, and when a relatively recent focus of symptoms can be clarified beforehand, beforehand. Today, we can probably add that psychoanalytically inspired joint therapies are best suited to parents who can see themselves in words, while interactive guidance with video feedback is best suited to parents who see themselves mainly in images. Within this framework of joint therapies, we can then imagine that it is precisely the psychic work of the third party, either the therapist or the co-therapists, which plays a decisive role in opening the way to the investment of this pre-object link. Although it is undoubtedly still too early to know whether this framework of action will provide or not decisive elements for reflections, it is however already plausible to affirm that the father-mother-baby system targeted 
by perinatal joint therapies, provides an antenatal prefiguration and then a postnatal figuration of the future intrapsychic triangulation. Therefore, they can pretend the status of psychoanalytical as soon as the material collected is interpreted in reference to the concept of trans or intergenerational. And now some concluding remarks about the question of demand. The pre-object investment of the links accounts for the movements toward the outside, what we call an intransitive demand even before the other is identified as such, which is clear in the context of the treatment of autistic children as shown by Geneviève Haag. In the light of the permanent process of construction, deconstruction of the object, the intransitive demand would not be addressed to the object, but it would already attest an investment of this intersubjective pre-objectal link whose we are trying to trace the intrapsychic representations thanks to the concept of the third topic. This type of demand seems to us essential to be heard specifically with especially with parents during pregnancy, with babies, with autistic children and in some cases with adolescents. Of course, the counter-transferential challenges of this demand, of this type of demand, are important, since it would be a question for the therapist to accept to regress himself beyond his status of object in order to find and hear the non-object-oriented link in the framework of archaic pathologies. It is indeed in this respect that the discussion of the third topic of the link and the polymorphic metapsychology of its traces in the transference and counter-transference can inspire the psychoanalyst in his daily clinic of all ages of life. To conclude, if in the course of development the link is primary at both the intersubjective and intrapsychic levels, the absence of a link is not freedom, far from it, but rather an alienation. I thank you for your attention. <laughs>